So let's take a look at something called the rational room theorem. And this is based on the following idea. So uh, what we want to do in general is we want to find the roots of a polynomial. We want to find the solutions to polynomial equal to zero. Now, if I have a quadratic polynomial, then I could use the quadratic formula to find the roots. Um, if I have a third degree or a fourth degree polynomial, there are also formulas for finding them, but they get really horrifically complicated. But we also have one other thing. In general, what we're most interested in are rational roots roots that can be expressed as a quotient of two integers. And so we have what's called the rational root theorem. And that's the following. Suppose I have a rational solution and assume that I've reduced that to whatever it can be. I have a rational solution to some polynomial equations equal to zero. Then the denominator, the divide, the denominator of my rational solution is going to be a divisor of my coefficient of the highest degree term. And the numerator is going to be a divisor of my constant term. And what that says is given any polynomial equation, I can tell you what the rational roots might be because they're a divisor of the constant term divided by a divisor of the, of the leading coefficient. And because positive and negative numbers also serve as divisors, they're really plus or minus the quotient of the two. Now, once I have those roots, I can then apply something called the factor theorem. And what this says is that suppose I find a solution to this polynomial equal to zero. Then as soon as I find that solution, I also have a factor. And you might have been taught in previous courses that when you're given a polynomial equation, you factor to find the solutions. And that's really the worst way of doing it because what we're really looking at is the factor theorem tells us that you solve the equation to find the factors. You don't factor to find the solutions, because that in general is going to be too difficult. How do you find the solutions? Well, to find the solutions, we use the rational root theorem to see what could be a solution. Well, how does knowing one factor help us find the factorization of the polynomial? Well, once I have one factor, remember the problem of factoring is I'd like to write this as a product of two things. If I know one of the things is this, then I can find the other factor by dividing. I can take this and I can divide it by x minus a and where this all comes together is that I can do that very easily and quickly using synthetic division. Now in general when I say I want to factor a polynomial uh, we like to limit the coefficients of the factors to rational numbers uh, and so any non-rational roots while they're still roots we don't ordinarily use them in our factorization process. So, for example, let's try a simple problem, factor 9x cubed plus 5x minus 2. And so, to begin with, so we can find this factorization by trying to solve the equation 9x cubed plus 5x minus 2 equals 0. So I've taken my polynomial expression, I make an equation by setting it equal to 0, and I try to solve it. So here's the worst way of trying to do this, factor the left-hand side to find the solution. Well, you don't want to do that. If you could factor the left-hand side, you would have factored it back here. So again, what makes this work is the rational root theorem guarantees that any rational root is going to be a divisor of the constant term, that's 2, divided by the coefficient of the highest degree term, that's going to be 9. So my divisors, my potential divisors, well, things that divide 2 are going to be 1 and 2, Things that divide 9 are going to be 1, 3, and 9. And a quotient of one of these with one of these is a possible rational root. Because those divisors can be plus or minus, I also want to take my quotients as being plus or minus. So that suggests that I have the potential roots as follows. So I can take 1 divided by 1. I can take 1 divide by 3. I can take 1 divide by 9. I could take 2 divided by 1. I could take 2 divide by 3. And I could take 2 divide by 9. And so here are my potential roots of this polynomial. And so potential factors are going to be x minus one of these. Well, which one? 
Well, I'll randomly pick one. Because any randomly selected number is the correct answer, then if I pick any one of these, I'll probably have the root and the factor. I actually, we don't actually know which, if any, of these are actually roots. So the only thing we can do is we can check each possibility until we find one. Or if we do work our way all the way to the end here and don't find a rational root, then we know that there are no rational roots and there is no factorization possible beyond what we already have. So since we want to do lots and lots of tedious arithmetic, uh, we want to do the easy things first. So let's pick out the whole number of possibilities first. And if we get lucky and these work, then we'll have something that uh, will have done some easy arithmetic. And if we are unlucky and they don't work, the arithmetic isn't too tedious. So I'll try x equals positive 1. So I'll apply my synthetic division algorithm. And, and I'll try x equals 1. So again, if I apply the synthetic division algorithm and I use 1 here, what I get as my last term is the same as evaluating this polynomial at x equals 1. And if the polynomial evaluates to 0, I know that x equals 1 is a root and that x minus 1 is going to be a factor. So I'll apply that synthetic division algorithm, drop the 9 down, multiply and add, multiply 9 by 1, and add, multiply 14 by 1, and add, and at x equals 1, I find the polynomial evaluates to 12, which means that x equals 1 is not a root, and x minus 1 is not a factor. And since our first attempt to find a root failed, we should give up and join the French Foreign Legion. Well, we should try the next possibility before we do something quite so drastic. So let's see. Uh, well, that is a plus or minus 1. So I might try x equals negative 1 and see how that works. So I'll apply my synthetic division algorithm. I'll drop the 9 down, multiply, add, multiply negative 1 by negative 9, add, Multiply 14 by negative 1 is negative 14 and add, and I get negative 16, and that tells me at x equals negative 1, the polynomial evaluates to negative 16. So negative 1 is not a root, and x minus negative 1 is not a factor. Well, the next whole number possibility is 2, so again, I'll apply my synthetic division algorithm. Drop the 9, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, and again, I find x equals 2 is not a root. Again, that's a plus or minus 2, so I'll try negative 2, see if that gets me anywhere. I'll drop the 9 down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, and once again, x equals negative 2 is not a root. Well, you know it was coming sooner or later. We have those fractions in there. We're going to have to try the fractional solutions. And so we'll try again. We'll go starting from the start, x equals 1 third. And so again, applying the synthetic division algorithm, I'll drop it down. 1 third times 9 is 3. Add. 1 third times 3 is 1. Add. 1 third times 6 is 2. Add, and I get a 0 at the end there. And so what happens with that 0? At x equals 1 third, the polynomial evaluates to 0. So x minus a third is a factor. And the other factor is going to be the quotient that I get from the synthetic division. So let's take a look at that. x equals 1 third is a root. So I know this polynomial is x minus a third times some other polynomial, which works out to be 9x squared plus 3x plus 6. And I want to see if I can factor that. So now the other term, this term, is quadratic. So that means it's a good idea to waste time using trial and error factorization. Well, it's quadratic. Let's apply the quadratic formula to find the rational roots to see if they exist. So I'll substitute into my quadratic formula. A is 9 b is 3, c is 6, so that's negative b plus or minus uh, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, and I'll let the arithmetic dust settle. And at this point, it should be obvious that when I do this next step here, I'm going to be taking the square root of a negative number, and that means my remaining roots are going to be complex numbers, and there are going to be no additional rational factors. So here is the complete factorization as far as we're able to take it. 